On behalf of the asylum for the deaf and dumb, my mother sloshed a mop for 20 years. It wasn't bad in autumn nights when lamps the colour of tangerines flared up to ripen all the rooms. Here was the home inside all homes, the disinfected hours and brazen lights that spoke of the world before I was born. One day, a boy who tried through his nose to verbalise the mahogany stairs was standing deaf, self-knowing, keen, a farmer's son from Ingledean. She was young back then, so young and nice, and he loved her right away, he infers, her bottled blondness, her sense of the earth's great possibilities and all that jazz. No thanks, she said when he offered a peanut and dropped a shell on the pine-scented floor. Sorry, he tried to say, that's bad. But she giggled again, made everything fine, long shadowed against the gloss of the walls. She'd like to have kissed his perfect mouth. At the Hartford Asylum for the Deaf and Dumb, the walls were the same from year to year. Obidon's famous buds that hung in pairs, like many a brilliant thing that never existed, except in our conception of their tone. The pictures added a hint of the mind's parade to the empty corridor and its fire alarms, the place where my mother plied her trade for years at the threshold of heaven. One day last week I journeyed down. There is hardly a roof on the building now. The grass had come inside and a resident muck is caked at intervals where the pictures hung. The famous birds are gone and then I knew, much as you do, that I wanted to live there all my days. Among the solid sense of what was definitely known, the great old mystery of a young girl's life, conveyed to her son in the years since then, leaving me sadly in love with silence, the memory of nuts and all it creates, falling three feet in a tribute to Yeats. At the Hartford Asylum for the Deaf and Dumb, my mother saw the other one, Wallace Stevens, going out for a stroll. He was muttering to himself in a light grey suit, the tycoon of poetry, appearing that day like a busy ermine friend of romance. That was the tenor of the story she told before she was old and all her eloquent buildings came to nothing. He looked like his own construction, she said, that Mr. Stevens, big in insurance, they say. She liked the kind of men who had trouble speaking. My mother was sure of that. They lighted her dreams as she stood with the mop. So I see her eyes and their crucial belief in the pairing of birds and the taste of lights. A day long ago, a day yet to come, at the Hartford Asylum for the Deaf and Dumb. Thank you very much. Um, I'll never write a poem again, but uh, thanks for having me. It's been great fun. Cheers.